So how can we build our face mask detection alert system, convolution neural network model, train that model, plot the architecture of the model as well as save the model or serialize it. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. This is the part 2 of the face mask detection alert system deep learning project series. In this video, I am going to show you the steps to build the convolutional neural network model from scratch. I will be telling you the significance of each hidden layer in the model that we are going to define. We are also going to see how to train the model in the GPU environment in the faster manner. We will then see how to plot the architecture of the convolutional neural network model. And finally, we are going to see the steps to save or serialize the model. So watch this video till the end because this is going to be the heart of our application. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. Please show your love and support by liking, sharing and subscribing to this video as I will feel highly motivated. Also, we now have the AI University Android app and the website which is in beta mode right now. So let's head over to the Google Collab Jupyter Notebook. In the next cell, we are building our deep learning convolutional neural network or CNN model which will get trained on the images we pre-processed in the previous video. Here, we are first importing necessary Keras libraries. Keras is using a TensorFlow as backend engine here in our case but you can use other backend engines like PyTorch Cafe as well. It's just that the coding style will change accordingly. You just need to do some configuration changes in one of the configuration files which is known as keras.json in order to use PyTorch or Cafe as a backend. Here we are importing convolutional neural network layers related libraries such as sequential, dense, dropout, flatten, Conv2D, Max Pooling 2D, Batch Normalization, Activation, etc. If you have jumped directly on this video and doesn't know much about uh, various layers of convolutional neural network, then you can watch this convolutional neural network playlist where I have explained the CNN as well as various layers and its functions in detail. Now, every Keras model is either built using sequential class, which represents a linear stack of layers or the functional model class which is more customizable. The sequential API allows you to create model layer by layer for most of the problems. It does not allow you to create models that share layers or have multiple inputs or outputs. Functional API allows you to create models that have a lot more flexibility as you can easily define models where layers connect to more than just the previous and next layers. We will be using the simpler uh, sequential model here since our CNN will be a linear stack of layers. The number of classes are defined as two here because we have two categories of classes of prediction which is with mask and without mask. That's why we are keeping its value as two. Then we have batch size which is capped as 32. Batch size is hyperparameter of gradient descent that controls the number of training samples to work through before the model's internal parameters are updated. In other words, how many images to pass to a neural network before the model updates its internal parameters during backpropagation. Concepts like backpropagation, epochs, etc. are covered in this playlist so you can click on i button above to know more about these concepts. So we are starting by instantiating a sequential model to initiate the neural network by making use of sequential class. Once it is initialized, it is then uh, adding various CNN layers in it. So the next layer it is adding here is convolution represented as conv2d 64 filters or feature detectors. A filter is a set of learnable weights which are learned using the backpropagation algorithm. Layers at the initial or early stages in the network architecture, that is closer to the actual input, learns fewer uh, convolution filters while layers deep in the network, that is closer to the output, will learn more filters. That's why you will see the count increasing in this subsequent layer groups. So you can see that here it is 
just the double of the previous one which is 128. Kernel size here is 3 by 3 which needs to be an odd number. So you could take it as a 5 by 5 or 7 by 7 as per your need. Kernel size is essentially an integer or tuple or list of a single integer specifying the length of one dimensional convolutional window. If your input images are greater than dimension 128 by 128, you may choose to use a kernel size greater than 3. To solve two purposes, number one, learn larger spatial filters and number two, help reduce volume size. Input shape parameter contains the input shape of a single image which we defined above. So the numeric value 1 here represents the channel type which is gray scale and hence kept as 1. Otherwise for color image it, it should have been 3. Activation is being done using ReLU. Then we have max pooling which is used to progressively reduce the spatial size of the representation to reduce the amount of parameters and computation in the network. Max pooling layer operates on each feature map independently. If you want to know more in detail about filters, kernel, paddings, strides, as well as various layers such as convolutional, uh, max pooling, dropout, or fully connected layers, then you can go through this deep learning playlist. I have created separate videos explaining the purpose and significance of each of these CNN layer concepts. Then we have created a second layer group in similar fashion to extract the features of the image. Notice that filter size is 128 in this layer group so that maximum features can be extracted from the images. So this is the way we create several hidden layers in the CNN to extract the image features. In the next layer group we have defined fully connected layer which is depicted by flatten. Flattening is converting the data into a one dimensional array for inputting it to the next layer. We flatten the output of convolutional layers to create a single long feature vector. In other words, we put all the pixels data in one line and make connections with the final layer. Then we are using dropout layer which is used to reduce the overfitting problem in neural networks. Next we are using activation function as ReLU followed by softmax activation function which is used for multi-class classification problem. It reports the confidence score for each class. Since ours is classification problem and we are uh, having classes, that's why we are uh, using it here. The scores returned by the softmax function for each class will add up to 1. The predicted class is therefore the item in the list where confidence score is the highest. Finally, we are printing the model summary using summary method. You could see that it has printed the entire neural network architecture we have created. The final layer has two uh, nodes depicting each of the class such as mask and without mask. Now you can also plot this model using a plot model library of keras.utils.vis underscore utils. This is something uh, which we are doing in the next cell. So plot model function takes two input arguments. Number one is the model variable name and number two the name with which we want to save this image diagram. See how clearly it is showing each layer in a sequential manner. In my case I saved it with a name face mask detection architecture dot png. So a separate image has been created for it which you can see here. In the next cell we are uh, training our model. So first you need to import optimizer as Adam. You can use any of the RMS prop or stochastic uh, gradient descent optimizers as well. I am using Adam optimizer here because it can be looked at as a combination of RMS prop and stochastic gradient descent with momentum. Adam is an adaptive learning rate method which means it computes individual learning rates for different parameters. Here learning rate is defined as 0.001. Number of epochs are defined as 50. You can increase the epochs if you want to get better optimized accuracy. Please note uh, the training time will increase significantly if you increase the number of epochs. This training time also gets affected by the number of hidden layers you define during your model building. 
Next, I'm using compile method that takes loss function, the optimizer and the matrix as an argument. We need a compiled model in order to train because training uses the loss function and optimizer. The purpose of loss function is to compute the quantity that a model should seek to minimize during training. It is something that is used to optimize the parameter value in a neural network model. Metric is being used as accuracy here because we want to compute the accuracy rate across all predictions. Next, I'm using fit method to train our model or fit our model. So inside this method, we are passing several arguments such as training data set, number of epochs, number of epochs to go through. Uh, then we have validation split, which is defined as 0.25 or 25%. So when I ran this cell, I got the following output. You could see that the training accuracy came as 99.87 and validation accuracy came as 93.41. These accuracies will increase as you increase the number of epochs. But you can see uh, we are getting pretty good accuracy with 50 epochs as well. The production grade models use uh, more than 1000 epochs to get better accuracy. In the next cell, we are plotting the training loss, validation loss, training accuracy and validation accuracy. We are making use of matplotlib library to plot these graphs. Look how are we extracting loss, well, loss accuracy, well accuracy associated with history method of fitted model. History collects the history of model training and keeps the details such as loss and accuracies of training and validation data. We are labeling x axis as number of epochs and y axis as loss value in first graph and labeling x axis as number of epochs and y axis as accuracy value in the second graph. Legend method plots the legend shown on the right hand side and show method plots the actual graphs. Look how these line graphs progressed with each epochs. From the plot of loss, we can see that the model is little overfitted since the gap between training and validation loss is not minimal. Also plot of validation loss decreases to a point and then it began increasing again. Please remember that a good fit is identified by a training and validation loss that decreases to a point of stability with a minimal gap between the two final loss values. You can do some hyperparameter tuning to minimize this gap. Please try doing that as you will learn a lot of other things while doing hyperparameter tuning. And that is very important uh, concept and step when you build all these models and train them. Treat it as your homework. From the accuracy plot, you can see that the accuracies are comparable for training and test data set. So in a nutshell, there are two reasons to visualize these values. Number one, to evaluate the underfitting or overfitting. One of the primary difficulties in any machine learning approach is to make the model generalized so that it is good in predicting reasonable results with the new data and not just on the data it has already been trained on. Visualizing the training loss versus validation loss or training accuracy versus validation accuracy over a number of epochs is a good way to determine if the model has been sufficiently trained. This is important so that model is not under trained and not over trained such that it starts memorizing the training data which will in turn reduce its ability to predict accurately. Number two, to adjust the hyperparameters. So hyperparameters such as number of nodes per layers of a neural network and number of layers in the network can make a significant impact on the performance of the model. Visualization of uh, the fitness of the training and validation data set can help to optimize these values and in uh, turn building a better model. Moving on, in the next cell, I'm saving or serializing our trained model so that we can use it later on for prediction purpose. This is being done to avoid training our model again and again to get predictions. We can just save this model once and load it whenever we want to in order to get predictions thereby saving a lot of time. I used save method to save it with the name face mask detection alert system dot h5. h5 is the Keras HD F5 file format using which we store these deep learning models. So one more step we need to do here. We need to download the saved model so that we can use it in our local environment or computer. So we saved our model. 
at this location on Google Drive. So just right click on this saved model. Once you do that, you will see a download option here. So if you click on download, you will see a download getting started at the lower left corner of this window. We will be using this model for prediction purpose. So folks, this is it for this video. Hope you have learned something new today. In the next upcoming part 3 video, I will cover the steps to capture the face to detect the mask so that necessary warning message can be displayed and an email is sent to the authorities so that they can take required action on violators. So here is today's question. Straight true or false? Atom optimizer can be looked at as a combination of RMS prop and stochastic gradient descent while doing model training. Please post your answers, comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.